drop, pin and drop. What age is is when you uh murdered the guy though? Like you 19 or uh 19, 18, 19 years old. So at that age, how are you You trying to do the math and add it up? No, 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 no. At that age, I know you're panning. You, panning. Tr- you screw with your shit. You trying to add it up? Like eighteen, nineteen. Okay, he did twenty one years. He been home this man. I hear how old he is. I got him. <laughs> how, how are you? How are you processing it after it happens, though? Because I know you did stuff oh, before, nah, I, I like you, you, like you said, you did violent things before. Yeah. But this was like something that was permanent. Yeah, yeah. That that dude's no longer gonna be here yeah. after you did that. No, I had permanent I had permanent stuff before, but whenever something happened, like I said, people always come to me and, and have me do it. And I was happy to do it. I even with the people like, oh no, nah, I'll take you that, I'll do that for you. What's up? Give me this amount of money, I'll do it. And they be like, What? Nigga, you went Give me that money and I'll do it for you. To that point, we we're like, yo, I'll do it for you. Because I didn't care. And you know what it was? But and, and, and which I, I I I said before, I don't remember what podcast i don't even think i said it but when i lost my pops i just was like hey why with me? because i felt he left me i felt that i wanted to go with him i felt that there was nobody there that i would ever be able to talk to there was no male figure my mom's had a boyfriend but he was laid back he wasn't you know he my mom's could do but so much you know she could chastise me yell at me do all that but it wasn't like a man being in How your life. How old were you when your pops passed? Eleven. Eleven. Yep. And you guys had a really close relationship, though. It wasn't that it was close, but I remember all the moments where he would teach me and be stern where I am with my son, and s- small situation, but he instilled it in me. He said, "I remember because my hair is soft, curly." They was rocking afros. This is the seventies. Afros back then. I wanted to be like the Fonz. I wanted to comb my shit to back, comb my hair in the mirror. You can't give me that goddamn comb. Bushing your head to the back. What's wrong with you? I never forget it. He grabbed me by my face, had me all up, <laughs> and he like only people that comb their hair back is the f word. I'm like, yeah. He said, will never be no f word. You hear me? Like, yeah, daddy, yeah. That, just that small thing always stuck with me. So then when I look at it now, I know I don't discriminate because I got a cousin that grew up with me, like three years older than me. He's a full trans am. My cousin is a full trans am. You see him, you would be like, who that lady right there? But my cousin a full trans am. He, you, oh, and another thing with him, he the one I used to do immature. Remember the group immature? Yeah. He used to do their hair. He was like their stylist, hairstylist, makeup and all that. Um, just when, and he, he came from England. When he first came from England, he was like about, I would say 14, 14 years old. So when he came from England, for me to see that, like, what the hell wrong with him? Because he was like real feminine with it. I'm like, what's wrong with this dude right here? And then I understood this was the dude my pops was telling me about. Don't you ever be like that right there. You know what I'm saying? But then it came a point where, you know, this is your family. This is your first cousin. People in the neighborhood fucking, you won't let nobody fuck with my cousin. No, yo, you fuck with my cousin. It's on. I don't care what he is. You do something to my cousin and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? So my pops put that in me. My pops put in uh, never use drugs. He told me the effect of what drugs do, how you feel when you high. And this night he used to sit me and my brother down and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget like certain situations where I enjoyed those moments. I enjoyed those father moments, even though at the time I never knew like father, son and stuff like that. But I knew like this man right here is something to look up to. I like the way he laughed, the way he come through smooth and I mean, he laughed. <laughs> he was that role model for you. Yeah. When he laughed, his laugh like, was like he had the coolest laugh. Like basically. Yeah. Outside of the hustling and drugs and all that other shit, he didn't let me see. I never seen that side. I only seen the chastisement, uh, uh, growth and development, telling the me guidance. to do the right thing, stay in school. Yeah, that's all I seen. So when he was gone, it was like, I remember the day my sister was pregnant with her first daughter. Um, I remember being in a room crying, banging the wall. 
and I just was cursing him. Like, I remember saying, motherfucker, I hate you, motherfucker. I hate this motherfucker. And I always vowed if I had a child, I would never leave him. And then, look, I wound up leaving, and I had a son. And I was going all those years. So that's why today I am so, like, tight with my son. And I don't let him out of my sight. I'm talking about my younger son. It's kind of interesting because, like, right after your father passes when you're 11, that's when you start to go to, to the street. Yep. Because my mom's couldn't got me. What's she going to do? Did you ever... Uh... Did you make that connection of like, these are the guys that are going to provide me with that, that male role, role model that, you know what I mean? That strong male guidance that I need. As far as who? The the guys in the streets, the hustlers, the. Nah, so what it was is that all my friends that I grew up with, all my friends, cousins, all of them, everybody lost their fathers or some of their fathers wasn't there. So now I fit right in. With them. We all out here, no daddies, no nothing. I remember we used to talk about our fathers because I remember me and them used to go see their fathers. Mm. And then we would all brag about who father got the most. Hey, yo, you see how big my pops is? Yo, my pops bigger than your father. We used to do that as kids growing up. And then to hear he lost his father, he lost his, and then I lost mine last. So it was like, damn. So I fit right in with them. So then now, you know, being on the block, being young kids, they start us off with um 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 taking a pack here, take a pack there, yo shorty, yo, do this right here. Yo, just yo, yo, get that under the car right there real quick. Yo, get that to him. Give it to him. All right, boom. They give you two or three dollars. All right, yeah, good looking out. Three dollars for giving that to him? I still don't know what's going on. I don't know. I just did a drug transaction just now. I don't even know that. <laughs> but that's how it was, you know what I'm saying? And and they began to school you growing up. The older dudes in the neighborhood began to speak. At the same time, as your mind and, and what you're seeing in the neighborhood is also helping develop your uh, growth as far as what direction you're going to choose. It's all a choice, too. It's all a choice. I chose the wrong uh, path, definitely. Because I was smart as a mom. I'm, I'm smart now. I think I'm a, I'm a genius. You can't tell me. I know I'm one of the smartest motherfuckers in the world. <laughs> I think if I, if I really, if, I'm telling you, if I would have applied myself from back then, because when I used to go to school, I used to be like, why am I in here? I know all of this work. I don't need to be in here. Get me out of here. I'm too small for this class. And the teacher, you think you're small? Yeah. Give me a test. I bet you I pass it. Give me a test. Pass it. No matter. Even when I went up north and went to GD and, and, and pre-GD, going to college and all that, give me a test. I'm going to pass it. They tell me something, I right, boom, I go in my cell, I study, pass, got the highest in the whole jail. Because they put the whole test on the board, and you can come by and see where you at. I was right at the top. The highest score in the whole prison. So I told you I'm a genius. I don't, if I apply myself, I'll, I'll, I can uh, do whatever. So I, back then, I wish I would have applied myself looking back. 